Welcome to Red Beard Radio. I'm Brian Keith, and we have a special treat today. And I know I keep on saying that, but it keeps on being true. We have the first Irishman on Red Beard Radio, Michael O'Neill. How are you doing today? Brian, I am doing amazing. Thank you so much for having me on. And it's a pleasure and honor to be on. But I was just in on your website, and I just want to say the approach that you have on your homepage about creating impact and about, you know, helping people to have better lives. I think that's so, so important. And it's one thing that I think a lot of people, especially in our industry, you know, marketing technology, that sometimes people lose track of a little bit. So I just want to say an absolute honor and pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on and really looking forward to getting into this episode. Yeah, I love that you say that. Mihail, or um, <laughs> I'm already going to say your name wrong. Folks, did you know that I don't speak Irish? It's okay. Even as an Irish person, I introduce myself and I say, hey, my name is Mihal. And people go, oh, Michael, how are you doing? I said, no, no, my name is Mihal. And I spend a huge amount of time over in America. So, well, before COVID anyway, I spent a huge amount of time. So I'm over and back probably about six to eight times a year. Oh, wow. And I'm going to be honest. I actually changed my name from Mihal to Mike for a while because it's very, very hard to get. But there's one really, really easy way if you wanted to remember it. So it's like you haul, but instead of you, it's me. So it's Mihal. Mihal. (laughs) Mihal. I love it. Well, folks, when you decide after this episode to go look at Mihal's work, you're going to spell it like Michael. And then O'Neill at the end. O-N-E-I-L-L. So two L's and O'Neill. And it's pronounced Mihal, and it's spelled M I C H E A L. So it's M- the E and the A are switched around. And if you look at it, it's got a couple of fathers in there as well. But it's actually M I C H E A L O N E I L. This is the best naming conversation I've ever had at the start of an episode. Usually it's the end where I say, okay, now here's exactly how to spell their name. But folks, I'm just excited. And here's why I'm so excited that Mihal has done a lot of work with systematizing the process of finding and getting your perfect clients to book. And we talk a lot about deploying the right systems on this podcast. Obviously, this is one of the most important ones is finding those right people and finding them in a systematized fashion. So you're not spending a huge amount of time one off on each individual person. And so, Michal, I'd love to hear some about how you developed this process and then something about how that process works and how people can start doing that perfect fit client attraction thing. Absolutely. And Brian, you set me a a heavy target earlier on. You said like 15 to 20 minutes here. And as you may know, for an Irish person, well, really, we don't even say hello in less than 15 to 20 minutes. But we're going to try condense this down into a nice tight format. So I set up a business helping accountants and we grew in Ireland and we built it up over a number of years. It was a traditional training consulting business. But realistically, it was burning us out. Um, And so we built a team. Things got really, really heavy. And that's when we started looking to the online world. And we came across, you know, like to say PLF and, and we did our first launch in the information products. And you have to remember in Ireland, information products are not really something that are out there much. And it was like, oh my God, we hit the gold mine. So we had this huge launch up front. Then we went, we did another product, another huge launch. And then we started building the online business and because we saw the opportunities that were there, not just for our own business, but the opportunities to impact people's lives hugely by building an online community, in a lot of ways, you're giving people a home, somewhere to belong online. It transformed our business, but obviously with it, then you start having new challenges and you start looking at, well, how do we start attracting our audience? And I really just fell in love with the whole online business world. And I started seeing, I was helping people build and grow their online business, but still running my own business. And that was literally in October, I exited OmniPro, the business that I had started, literally, as you mentioned, to help course creators and membership site owners attract profitable, perfect fit clients at scale. I suppose there's two main problems that people have. The first problem is that they go out and they attract leads, but the leads aren't the right leads for their business. They get these leads in, then they put an offer in front of them and they don't buy And then you have this other problem where some people just struggle in the first place to find those leads at all. And that was really the two things. So I'm a member of, you know, PLF. I'm a member of Tribe. I'm in masterminds with Jeff and with Stu. For folks who aren't familiar, PLF is Product Launch Formula. That's Jeff Walker's thing. And Tribe is Stu McLaren's thing. I did an episode with Stu a couple of weeks ago. 
If you look at redbeard.am and you look for Stu, S-T-U, you'll find the episode with him. So Mihol, you're just listing off all these different methodologies people have for building businesses, but you're talking about the actually finding the right leads part of things and qualifying them. Exactly. So you have all these methods that really work amazing systems, but what people were struggling with is how do we just get the people in or how do we get them into our audience and how do we apply it? And that's really where I came up with this methodology. Some steps are more important, but I start with the bottom. And the first and the most important thing in attracting your perfect fit clients, and we do have perfect fit clients, perfect fit prospects. But the most important thing in finding your perfect fit client is you need to map. So the first part is we map. We map from a personal perspective. What do you want personally from your business? It's the one thing that people totally overlook. They don't think, what sort of lifestyle do I want? How do I want to show up in my relationships? You know, there's lots of different wheels and there's lots of different models out there. One that I like is I look at relationships, I look at health, I look at lifestyle, I look at impact, and I look at income. And then to look at who do you want to work with? How do you want to work with the people that you want to work with? Who gets you excited? Who do you know that you can help the best? And to really get granular on that. Still in the mapping phase, then building on who you want and how you want to operate as a person, we look at the business model. So the thing that people a lot of times don't realize is the business is there to serve you. Yes, it's there to serve your clients and your customers, but it's actually there first and foremost to serve you. And you have to set it up. The business has to be led by what you personally want. So that's why the personal level is on the foundation. Then we go into the business level and then built on top of the business level. And this really is one of the keys is the avatar for your perfect fit client. Michal, I'm feeling slightly overwhelmed just hearing all these questions. And I can only imagine that someone listening to Redbeard Radio in their car is going, whoa, that's a lot of questions. Is there somewhere that people can go to get a list of these questions later so they can just enjoy listening right now to what we're talking about, but know they can go back later and actually get this list of all these questions they should be asking? Brian, what I will do is I will send you kind of a link, a document that can be downloaded to run alongside this, where I will pull out some of the most important planning questions when you get it in. Love it. Okay, folks. So redbeard.am, when you go there and you search for Michal, spelled M-I-C-H-E-A-L, when you search for that name at redbeard.am, then you'll find the link that's going to give you the most important of these questions. Now we can all relax and we can listen to the wisdom being dispensed at rapid fire Irish speeds. Michal, please continue. You are such a pro and your audience is going to love you so much for that. That was a master stroke to, to read me back. <laughs> I was thinking, I got to start writing down like, and I was trying to answer each question as you were saying, I was like, well, actually, so my lifestyle in terms of like, I, I got to go write a paragraph right now. Oh, crap. He's already on to the third question after that. What did I just miss? Oh, and that's one of the challenges is there's all this stuff. And when you think about how long it takes you to walk someone who decides to sign up for your perfect fit client thing, how long it takes to actually talk with them and deploy it. Like I was just talking with Joshua Lysick, the copywriter. Uh, he, he's a ghostwriter, actually, is what he does. And it actually takes like five to 12 months, his process. So trying to get any of that down into a podcast, a short podcast length, it's sort of impossible because it takes five to 12 months. And with your process, you know, you might take three years to really help someone do everything you can think of for them. So trying to boil that down into, well, here's the, here's the very initial baby step questions to ask. It's this interesting challenge. When you look at any sort of product, so people I work with, they're course creators, membership site owners. By and large, your product or your, your membership is going to have anywhere between five to seven key areas. Now, one of the most important things in attracting your perfect fit clients is creating a roadmap for them, which leads all the way from your free content and what I call a value ascension roadmap. And the value ascension roadmap is this road that you envisage for your perfect fit client from first contact, that very first time, whether that's a video on Facebook, whether it's a blog and a blog post, whether that's a tweet, whatever it is, that any piece of content that you put up 
there's a line drawn from that to the next step that you want them to take. And the next step that you want them to take could be a lead magnet. Now, when I'm working with my clients, if you have five to six key areas in your membership or your information product, we normally break that down into maybe five lead magnets so that there is a lead magnet for each one of the strands of your information product. So let's get specific here with a live example so we can slow down the information just a little bit and go think about what, Mihal, what you're really saying here. So for the impact framework, which is my book, which is a lead magnet at redbeardimpact.com, that's the beginning of the funnel I have to go join the Redbeard Accelerator. And in the book, as well as in the emails, the follow up once you go get the book, we talk about the six parts of impact. We have the three pillars which are message platform and tribe, and then the three parts of the impact cycle, which are inspiration, action, and change. And what you're saying is, okay, you have six topic areas that you've written about. That's nice. But you're saying, in addition to this book, which goes into all of them, you should really extract one of those like action, let's say, how to get someone to take the first piece of actual action that takes minutes or days to actually go do. You're saying, take that and then go turn it into something that people can go have a lead magnet to take them directly into talking about that one little slice of the overall impact framework. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, Brian. That is a brilliant, brilliant example. So your purpose should be to give them degrees of transformation. So let's say that ultimately your coaching is where you want people to end up with. So with your coaching, you can get huge transformation for people when you work with them. So your book delivers the same transformation, but just in a slightly smaller percentage, because obviously you don't get the one-on-one -on -one attention. Yeah, the point of the book is to introduce you to the idea that there's a way to look at this. And when you look at how I describe the impact framework, everyone says, oh, well, I'm sort of stronger at this one, but oh, I'm sort of weaker at this one over here. And just to get across the idea that if you identify where you're weak and you go fix that, and then you double down on where you're strong, then you can probably make substantially more money in your business, right? And so it's just that little idea. The point of the book is to put forth this idea. And then in all the nurture emails after that, and then in the Redbeard Accelerator, the actual membership, then we go do that. Do the thing that now the book has introduced you to do. You could do this. And the membership is let's do it. Exactly. It's an often overlooked area as well. Sometimes it's forgotten. But then the other things that I say is build a pillar post. So basically build a pillar post for each one of the areas. The pillar post will attract people from SEO. You can also drive Facebook ads to the pillar post. There's an awful lot cheaper than asking people to opt in. But once people get to the pillar post, there's then going to be an opt in for that lead magnet, which again, then will move people. So in your case, after the lead magnet, there might be an engagement series that goes out. And after the engagement series, an offer made for the membership. If you're conscious and you think deeply about on the front end, any piece of content that I put out, how does that lead people to the next step, which could be my pillar post or the next step, which could be my lead magnet, making sure that your lead magnet leads people into the next step, which could be a membership or maybe a low end offer. And that's another option. They're called self-liquidating offers or they're just tiny little micro products again, to get a portion of the transformation that you can deliver in your higher products. It's having that linear progression for people, which for your perfect fit client, if you want people to end up in your membership, you are thinking all the time about what are the attributes and the transformation, the characteristics of people who you get excited when you see them in your membership. And that's really what the process is. I'm pretty sure we need to do a Jocko and Tulsi and, and do a three hour long podcast episode. Sure, my podcast producer will kill me, but it'll be worth it to dive into all these concepts an hour at a time. But for right now, where can folks go to learn more about what you're doing and to go get some of those lead magnets? Give us the links that people can go to find out more. If you go to miholoneal.com, you will find everything there. So that's M I C H E A L O N. E-I-L-L dot com. Wonderful. And folks, if you go to redbeard.am and you search for the name Michal, M-I-C-H-E-A-L, like Michael, but switch the E and the A, you can go get some more of those links. Michal, thank you so much for being on the show. Super, Brian. Thank you very much. Um, an absolute pleasure to be with you. And thanks to your audience for listening. And I, I look forward to chatting to you all again.